I'm Robert North. I'm a Dutch photographer and been working as an independent photojournalist for the last, well, 15, 18 years now. The area where we went to was Liari, which is a very big part of Karachi, and about a million people are living there, and it is a very lawless territory. The police has very little to say, and everything which isn't allowed in Pakistan happens in those places. Along the banks of the river, in that part of town, there are a lot of the huge fires raging every day and every night of people burning all kinds of waste. As soon as you walk in that neighborhood, you get this apocalyptic feeling. The earth is all colored because of the fires. Uh, there are packs of dogs roaming around. And those dogs, they just live on dead animals, food waste, whatever they can get. He collects all the wires from electronical equipment, then takes it to the river. He burns it there to get rid of the plastic and all the other stuff he can't use. And then he sells the copper or other metals to people who are interested. Well, they are Esam, Emad and Wazim Khan. And both of them don't have a job. Unemployment rate in Pakistan is, is very high. So the only way for them to make money is to collect scrap metals. And there are a few refugees from Afghanistan. They use these big magnets and they try to pull the last pieces of metal out of the earth. Abu Bakr is 12 years old, he's from Afghanistan, he's an orphan and he lives on what his boss is paying him. So he hardly has any clothes, he's skinny. It's these tiny little details in a photo which can tell you a lot of things about condition people are living under. It's a small canal and the water was pitch black. There was a horrible stench coming out of it. Everything is dumped into the river. It's polluting the entire coastline of Pakistan. He buys all the broken computers from traders, trying to find the most precious metals. It's a very small space of a few square meters. It only has a door, so it doesn't have any windows. And it's full of junk. And he spends most of his day in that small space. He's been doing this for 10 years now. And part of the gold comes in from electronic waste. They have to use a lot of chemicals to melt the gold. The only precaution he takes is he tries to keep his mouth shut while he's using the chemicals or hold his breath. And these gold melters don't get very old. They light the plastic wires, they usually use some gasoline. They burn it and all of a sudden you got this burst of flames and a very intense heat and as soon as you have this intense heat your body starts itching all over and that, that happens within 30 seconds and you keep scratching the whole day. So a lot of those chemicals end up in the smoke in the air and a lot of those people burning the waste have problems with our lungs. Omar Sharif, um, he's 14 years old. He's never been given any guidelines on how to work safely. He burns the cables and wires, they just put them on the ground, start a fire with some paper. They use a stick to keep the fires going and they try to keep distance because sometimes some of the things in the fire explode. Every part of the recycling has its own shop, so you got traders buying the computers when they get shipped into Karachi. Then they sell them to the workshops who take them apart, so those workshops separate the plastics from the metals. 
then those workshops sell the metals and the plastic to people who reprocess them and then it's being sold off to anybody who's interested in buying. It's very old-fashioned machine. It works like a grinder. You just throw the plastic in from above and from underneath you get the scrapes of plastic. So you've got these huge reservoirs where they throw in the scraps of plastic, they bleach it and then they dry it out in the sun. And nowadays most of the plastic ends up in China. He left school because the teachers were beating him. Public schools in Pakistan are quite bad. So you see a lot of kids dropping out of school. But he also feels that he has no other option. He can't afford a private school. He has to earn money. So what can he do? I instantly saw his hands, they were pitch black because after they burn the uh, wires and the plastic they have to collect it again, so it's in the dirt with his hands every day. So his hands turn pitch black and it doesn't get off anymore, he told me. I was very much surprised about the scale on which things happen in the Ari, the amounts of waste being handled in that neighborhood and that it was such a huge business. You have thousands and thousands of people living off waste.